our sixth annual women's conference. And we thank God for our own bishop, Bishop Maurice Williams, and the first lady, Teacher Crystal Williams, the missionary Annette Johnson is the women's president. And we thank God for the theme, whose report when you believe. Also, we thank God for all the guest churches that came out tonight. Please come back on tomorrow. Thank you.
Is it all right for me to say what the Lord told me to say? Amen. Did you bring your Bibles? Y'all bring your Bibles? Amen. All right, now we in the church. Let's go to the Bible tonight. I'm going to talk about whose report. Whose report? My topic tonight is going to take you back to Israel during Moses' day and how God expected them to be able to discern when he's sending them a place and when he is not. The message is going to look back and it's going to run parallel to our day. You know the story when they were sent to go and get the report of a certain city, praise God. So if you would turn with me to Numbers chapter 13, and if you listen to me with your spiritual ears, you'll hear what the Lord is saying tonight. Whose report, thank God for the scripture reading, who have believed our report, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace is upon who? Upon him, and with his stripes we are what? healed both naturally and spiritually and so my message tonight is to keep us healed spiritually and naturally uh, numbers chapter 13 Amen. and we'll start with verse 1 it says and the Lord spake unto Moses saying send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan Hallelujah. which I give unto the children of Israel of every tribe of their father shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. I want us to first take note that he said those that were a ruler. So when God has pulled you out and set you up to lead, you need to lead from the front. You need to lead by example, and you need to lead according to his words. You need to lead in a way that's pleasing to him. So these were rulers. He pulled them out, out of every family and told them to go. Now it says... And verse 3, and Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were what? Heads of the children of Israel. Again, we place an emphasis that these are those that are supposed to be what? The head. Didn't the word say we're the head and not the tail? Praise the Lord. So these were heads that they sent out. Okay, now jump down to verse 17. Verse 17, everybody there? And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up into the mountains. Yeah. And see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell up therein, whether they be strong, whether they be weak, whether they be few, or whether they be many. Did you hear that? He said, I want you to go to this land. I want you to check it out. Look down in this land. And I want you to see what kind of land it is. Look at the people. See if they're weak, if they're strong, if they're few, or if they're many. And he said, check out the scene. So the Lord gave me Matthew. Matthew 7. Now listen at this. He said, whether they be few or whether they're many. So he called us out as believers to go and look out in this land, in the world. And he said, check out the difference. He said, know them that labor among you. He said, don't get caught up. Don't get tied up in this change that's going on in the church world. He said, this church world is changing, and they're taking a turn for the worse. They're going backwards, the Lord said. He said, so check it out. I need you to go and see what kind of people that you're hanging around. See what kind of people that's coming and getting in the pulpit. See what kind of people that your flock is hanging with. See what kind of people you rub your elbows with. Know the difference in people that are just standing with their mouth and living the life. Check out the people. Do that sound right so far? He said, check out the people. Now listen at what this says. It says, enter you in at the straight gate for those that are taking note, Matthew 7 and 13. Enter you in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to what? Destruction. And many there be which go in there. He said, see if there were many or were there few, right? Okay, so if everybody doing it, that's not God's way. If everybody's saying it, that's not God's way. If everybody's going, that's not God's way. So you need to check this thing out and see whether they be many or whether they be few. Don't get discouraged when it's just a few over here on this side that God calls. Because only a few is going to enter in on this road that the Lord is referring to. Now it says, because strength is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto what? Life. And few there be that find it. Few there be. You ain't going to have a whole bunch of people coming out to a service like this full of holiness women. Are you kidding me? But God ain't going to send a word to the house and he say, hang on and don't be discouraged. Don't get out the way because it ain't but a few. Because that's the road that I'm on. The road that I'm on is where only a few is going to be trapped. Verse 19, we still in num 
verse 13. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. And what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. Don't get caught up because holiness folks got strongholds in their life. See, they've been entertaining the world a little bit too long. Now you was, the, the world used to look over in the church and see something that it designed, not the world, the church looking out there in the world, and we trying to see what it is we can get from them. What in the world do you want? Somebody say, she talking slang. Go back to your question. What in the world do you want? What you want in the streets? What out there in the streets do you want? Somebody say nothing. Now don't say unless you're meeting now. Somebody say nothing. nothing. Nothing in the world that I want. Nothing in the world that I need. Everything I need, God got it. God got it. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Have that sense of exercise where they can discern between good and what? Evil. And so I never met a bunch of people. That everything is okay. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. It's okay to say this. It's okay to say that. All this changes. But whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? They call it holiness legalism now. What? Holiness is legalism. Holiness is backwoods. Holiness is old timing. But how many know the Bible says seek the what? The old path. He said, seek it and walk the in. He said, this is the good way. Well, if it's the good way, why don't many people want to go on it? Let's show you the religious spirit that's going on in the earth realm. If the Lord himself say it's the good way, it seems like everybody get on board and want to go with the good way, right? But the Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way. You got to listen to the words that's coming out of my mouth. Let me tell you this. I'm like this. I'm a teacher. Now, if the Holy Ghost make me skip, you better believe I'm a skip. Yeah. Honey, I'm going to go through these pews and go to the back door and come back up here and keep on preaching. But it's going to be the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says he didn't have an ear let away. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God is trying to tell his people that's walking in holiness to hold it in the road. Hold it in the road. Whose report are you going to believe? Let's keep going. Verse 20. And what the, the land is whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye what? Good courage. Bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. So he said, see it's been taking wood in there. So this is for the bishop tonight. Timothy says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to honor, and so to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. If you want to know how to walk, look at the elect lady of the church. If you want to know what to do, listen to what's coming out the bishop's mouth. He said, in a great house, there are many vessels. So even in a holiness church, you still got folks staggering around trying to figure out, oh, is it all right to do this? Is it okay to do that? I'm going to see if I can slide this in. And you know, it don't really take all that. Well, it's okay if I can touch my skirt up a little bit. Well, you know, it don't, you don't have to really put on a camisole every service, do you? Well, you don't really have to cover your legs up, do you? Come on now. Come on now. In a great house, to say a great house. Holiness is the greatest thing on the face of the earth. Holiness is the greatest thing on the face of the earth. Because he said, be ye holy for I am holy. So when you're in a holiness church, take heed to what the leader's doing. Take heed. How you see that sanctified woman going over there? Check out. Sanctify holy. Tree bringing forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringing forth evil fruit. 
Uh, you may not understand what that means. 18 says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. What? Maybe you don't understand what that means. 19 says, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Maybe you don't understand that. What for about their fruits you shall know them? How you living? Not what you saying. How you living? Not what you saying. What you doing? Your character. Do you have a goat spirit? Or do you have a sheep spirit? See, goats bug again. Everything in the pastor say a goat gonna bug. Uh, I don't see why we gotta have service at 3 o'clock. Well, I don't understand why we gotta have chicken every time. Well, So, no matter how long you've been in God, 
one year, two years, five, ten, twenty, don't change. Don't change. Don't change. See, the Lord, he didn't give me a message that, hey, slap your neighbor, high five, get up and spin around three times and tell the devil you coming out of it. No. Stay with it. Stay with it. Don't get weary and well-doing. In due season, you're going to reap if you what? So listen at that. Y'all still in Numbers 13? Now 27, and they told them and said, We came unto the land where thou sentest us, and surely they flow with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. This the fruit. See that? Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled in. Look at that. See, you used to say, I'm not down by the way. Ooh. I'm not down and by the way. Yeah. Walking in the light. Holiness is rising. I'm not doubting by the way. Now you're doubting by the way. Now you're doubting by the way. You want to change a song. You're doubting by the way. Doubting by the way. Don't doubt about this way. So whose report are you going to believe? So they said the cities are wild. Now the sanctified women say, I feel wild in. Unbutton, unbutton. I feel wild in. Chai, chai, chai. I feel wild in. Tight, tight, tight. Come on, now you know better than that. You know better than that. Ain't that the truth? I feel wild in. I feel closed in. So I got to come out. Tuck it in. Tuck it in. Keep it tucked in. Right. Keep it tucked in. Hey, I'm telling the truth. Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Am I telling the truth? Amen. Amen. Let's keep going here. When a real preacher comes with repentance and remission of sin, they say you're legalistic. God coming for souls. He coming for clothes. Where do you get that from? God coming for souls. He ain't coming for clothes. See, when I hear people say that, I know they don't read the Bible. Because see, Achan got destroyed because of a Babylonian garment. If that happened one time in the Bible, that's enough to scare me about my clothes. If something happened one time, that's enough to make me check my garments. It don't matter how I dress. It don't matter how I wear. You come in here, you can't. You can just see the bishop in there later, but when you go to the grocery store, what you doing? What you got on when you go to the mailbox? You shouldn't even go to the mailbox any kind of way. Sanctified women undressed in front of their children. Children see your body parts. Sanctified is supposed to go in the house too, don't it? See, it's time to get this thing back in the road. Let's go to June. First June. read this, it says, and they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants and the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and were in our own sight as what? Grasshoppers. Stop seeing yourself as a grasshopper when you stand before the world. The world should be looking at you and patterning themselves after you, not you patterning yourself after the world. You know that's a scripture in Isaiah and it talks about the devil and it says that when we sin, we're going to look on him narrow eyed and say, is this the man? See, the enemy tricking so many people out of their place with the Lord and then at the end of the day when we get down and see how tiny, how nothing he is, it's going to be too late. It's going to be too late. First John chapter 2. And verse 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Yeah. Shouldn't the older men be lead by example? All right. He said, I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I'm too young to be saved. Everybody needs to be saved. Right. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. You see how he included everybody? But now, sanctified folks in the church bucking and their children at home watching foolishness on TV. Sanctified people 
is going on and they running for the Lord, but you know, that's me. They get to make their own decision. You know, God convicted me of that, but you know, I'm going to let them make their own decision. If it's wrong for you, it's wrong for your children. He said, I have written, verse 14, unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Overcome the wicked one. Stay in 1 John and go to chapter 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Verse uh, 4. 1 four, John chapter 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But it seems like it's the opposite now. It seems like the world is greater and we're on the smaller end. But we have the greater one on the inside. It says, verse 4, 5, They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. You see how God wants to continue to keep a difference between clean and unclean, between holy and unholy. He said, they are the world, so they speak of the world. We are of God, verse 6, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. I'm calm tonight because God wants us to recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Amen. Praise the Lord if you're in holiness. But don't let the spirit of error creep in your spirit and tell you you don't take all of that no more. And tell you that you can take down. You know, if the church starts getting small, then, well, I guess we're going to have to start using the cinemas on the instrument. No. How can a sinner ignore anything? How can a sinner, how can an unbeliever annoy anything? But these are the things that's taking place in the holiness church. We're so desperate that we're compromising and we're doing and allowing any and everything. If you got one person that's sanctified, you use that sanctified person until they catch on fire and draw some more sanctified folks that fill this church up. That's what God wants us to do. Don't compromise with sin. Because he's coming back for a church without spot without wrinkle, without blemish, or any such thing. See, we can focus so much on the wrong thing, but God wants us to recognize the spirit of error. I'm finding out that unless you hoop it, people don't comprehend it. You gotta hoop, you gotta make a scene, you gotta clown. But see, there's so much sin going on now, you need to come straight to your door and say, come on now, recognize what's happening in the church. Recognize. Anytime you got the uh, the pastor in the first man, and we around here come against holiness preachers, the pastor and the elect man, two hard led dusty men standing up there, talking about the Lord ordained them to lead God people, and you upset with holiness. The devil is a lie. All other lies. <laughs> Woman pastor and her elect lady have barbed out. Women of God to turn their head look like a bed of roses. Sanctified. I'm gonna walk up the street if I gotta walk by myself. Everybody don't have long hair. So let, don't, don't, don't strain that anatomy and swallow a camel. Everybody don't have long hair. But what's going on with the women of God bobbing their hair? Our hair is our what? Glory. You don't want your glory to be contaminated, but you everybody contaminate their glory. I got something to say tonight. Watch this spirit. Watch the spirit of error. If I don't say nothing else, watch the spirit of error. Any and everything is coming to the church. We got to entertain the children. You know how we entertain our children? Come on, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The baby today. Don't they tell you that the church need to wake up? Don't they tell you that the church needs to wake up? The church done went to sleep. 
Shower. The devil is stealing the children. Look. The devil is stealing the children. Compromise. This is a good house. This is a great house. That's why I brought the scripture. This is a great house. But even in a great house, there are vessels to dishonor. God wants the church to wake up. Keeping your, ch your child out the street, substituting sitting in the house of God but not being filled with the Holy Ghost does not God will. He wants them to be filled with the Holy Ghost like you feel with the Holy Ghost. You got people saying, I'm saved, but I ain't filled with the Holy Ghost yet. I just immediately became confused. What are you saved from? The Holy Ghost is the only thing that's going to keep you. The Holy Ghost is that seal, that stamp of approval. See, there's a slide doctrine sliding in. I just recently heard a statement. 13 got saved. 9 got saved, but 13 got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, what you going to do about the 9? But everybody went out the same note. Is it the being filled with the Holy Ghost a priority? Amen. Where are we going, church? Amen. Where are we going? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Come on now. We're going to sleep, church. Paul came upon some believers. That's what the Bible called them. They were believers, but he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? We're going to sleep, church. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and I shall be saved. Come on now, I take more than that to open Cracker Jacks. You gotta repent. You gotta repent. You gotta change. You gotta get filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God giving utterance. In the church, I ain't filled with the Holy Ghost just because they know how to put on a nice suit, but they ain't going outside. We going to sleep. We going to sleep. Get out the order. Bed of fornication. Right back on time, the next service. I left my notes because we need to wake up. We need to wake up and see the spirit of error. See this false doctrine that's coming in the church. Don't change your message. The apostles taught the same message from the beginning to the end. Some of them was beheaded. Some of them were killed because of that message. But we cannot get weary. We got to remember the report that we are supposed to believe. We got to continue being sound in doctrine. We got to continue to tell our children the truth even if they cry. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? We got to continue to focus on the right report. And that's holiness. Find a peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You see that? So I want to encourage you today, focus on the right report. Focus on the right report. Focus on the right report and don't get weary while all these churches is changing and preaching false doctrine. Don't shame your pastor. Don't be in the church. And then when you get on the Facebook page, you got on your skinny jeans, and you got your back out, and you got the twerking. What? Drop it like it's hot. You better drop that sand like it's hot. You better drop that carnality like it's hot. Drop that carnality like it's hot. Drop that compromising spirit like it's hot. In the name of Jesus. Oh, no. 
Lord. 